Hi you guys, we're back in this beautiful studio and you know why? Because today we're gonna interview one of my favorite DJs, DJ Damage. You may know him from Revolt TV or you may know him from Hollywood Unlocked. So you guys stay tuned, this is The Dose. Okay, we have DJ Damage. Hey, what's up, y'all? How are you? Feeling good. That's um, good. Always feeling amazing. You know, got my son in the studio. Yes. So, so just, you know, background information. How'd you get this name, DJ Damage? Oh, my God. Where'd it come from? So when I first started DJing, um, I was in school. I had a music program. And when I went home for the summer, it was a boarding school. I went to boarding school. Wow. They gave me this audio interface, which is essentially what you use to record uh, artists, you can record instruments, what have you. So I used to record people in my neighborhood. So I used to go by DJ Duel because my name's Abdul. Oh. Okay. And I was like, all right, it's time to let that go. That's not, that's not it. And one of the dudes I was courting, he was like, you should be DJ Damage because you do damage. Ooh. And I was like, oh, that's pretty corny too, but I didn't have anything else. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna let this stick for now. Yeah. And then I just went with it. I went back to school from the summer. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm DJ Damage. They all laughed at me like, that's such a corny name. And I just stuck with it. So yeah. that's the origin of my name. And what's home for you? What was Philadelphia? You Philadelphia. Home of Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Kevin Hart. Yes. Yes. All of the greats. <laughs> so speaking of Kobe, oh my gosh, did you get to go to the funeral? Or? No, I don't do funerals, unfortunately, okay. but I did watch it. Okay. Okay. And were you a big fan? Um, I, I wasn't a huge fan. I'm a huge fan of him as a person, but you gotta understand, I'm from Philly. I'm a Sixers fan. Okay. So he was always like <laughs> tearing us up, you know, in basketball. So I'm not gonna say I'm, I'm a fan of Kobe as a person. I love everything he stood for. Him as a, a family man, but when it came to being on court, I was such a Sixers fan that I couldn't I couldn't wrap my mind around yeah. liking Kobe Bryant. But of course, I love him as a person. Though. Yeah, he was a great person. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I'm from D.C. and mm -hmm. I love it, but I love Cali too. Like, what do you think? What's better, East Coast, West Coast? What are you? Um, I think you can't say which is better. Okay. I think both have different vibes. I think about the East Coast, I think of fast pace. Mm -hmm. I think of people grinding. I think of seasonal changes. When I think of L.A., I feel like L.A. is where you go once you made it, to be honest. Okay. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say you can't make it here because of course you can a lot of people come here but i feel like everything's so relaxed and so low paced you know <laughs> like it just feel like this is a place you come once you put in all your groundwork you come out here for a few weeks and relax and then get back to it but i love la i love the people such amazing people here very genuine people that are actually from la yeah, not yeah. talking about hollywood yeah but i like la it's a good vibe it is a good vibe i agree and so like speaking of making it you made it in a sense where you are <laughs> speaking to these same people these celebrities just mm -hmm. like you know doing interviews like this right on yeah, Hollywood yeah, Unlocked. Yeah, yeah. how is it interviewing these people it's fun because I, I what I love about interviews especially when you do it on TV but you know as you talk about Hollywood Unlocked that's a podcast mm -hmm. um I love to see the people you interview get nervous yeah like people forget that just because they're superstars that don't mean they don't get nervous when I worked at Revolt <laughs> You know, he was interviewing Nas and he was nervous. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand what it's like to be some of these stars. And they be like, oh, this person's an asshole. Or this person's mean. It's like, no, they might be nervous. They might be shy. You don't know what's going on with them. So I think that's the best part to like when you sit down with people and you talk to them. You know, it's different from when you're performing. When you have to speak, it's a different uh, level of being vulnerable. It so is. I love interviewing people, just picking their brains, especially people that don't want to open up uh, much at first mm -hmm. and like you know you keep asking good questions and just you know keeping that good vibe and watching them you know get more and yeah. more into the interview so it's fun and get more comfortable with you I feel yeah. like you have that vibe that can make people comfortable with I'm you I'm just a so. goofball that's why yeah so people just are like blah, 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 like you know start talking I mean for me me personally I don't dig into people's personal lives right. and stuff I feel like what I've learned at doing a revolt because they're like oh you know we need them to talk about this situation mm. they need them to talk about this I'm like but if you make them comfortable enough and it's on their mind, they're going to address it. And yep. a lot of times we got exclusives without me even having to directly ask. Mm -hmm. I can like kind of ask around the subject and they'd be like, yeah, I want to speak about, you know, something that's been happening. It's like, because you made them comfortable, you're not 
prying into their personal exactly. life. So, but everybody got their method and you know, people that do it well, like the Charlemagnes, the Jason Lees, they got their tactics. They're like, you know, one of a kind. I just right. think everybody has to use the method that's uh, authentic to, to them. them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, okay, that just, this just makes me think about, you know, like in the music industry now, like it's very common that people have social anxiety. Yeah, yeah. And different things. Do you believe that? Because everybody's yes. like shooting down Summer Walker. It's like, you don't have social anxiety, girl. But how can you tell somebody what their yeah. anxiety level is? I have social anxiety. I don't like being in rooms with a bunch of people a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm easily overwhelmed. Like if we were talking here and somebody was talking over there <laughs> and then that car came by, I would be like, whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, and you'll be talking be like, what's wrong? I'm just like, I'm overloaded. But, mm -hmm. you know, people they gotta understand everybody's normal. Like yeah. Summer Walker, they're like, oh, well, if you look at Instagram, she's showing her body and this and that. That means she's not, you know, social, like, um, have social anxiety. It don't work like that. Apples and oranges, man. But it just don't <laughs> work like that. Just because she likes taking pictures that yeah. like, it doesn't work like that. I believe very much so she has social anxiety. If you look at it, a lot of musicians, unless you wanted to be a star, like Summer Walker was underground. She was making music that she loved and she blew up. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't ready for all the other stuff that exactly. came with the, the industry. But I believe a lot of people have social anxiety. I think that's something definitely that needs to be taken serious. I know I have it. Yeah. Um, my son doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hi. But yeah, it's a, it's a real thing. And so I was going to ask too, when you interview people, since you've been talking to people so much, do you ever take in their ideals, like their perspectives? And you're like, hmm. He has a point, and like you adopt them yourself. Yeah, I did. I remember having a conversation with King Los. If you don't know who King Los is, I love is. King Los. Yeah, That's yeah, my yeah. boy. But King Los, and he was uh, having this long talk with me about how the Earth is flat. And he, yeah, yeah, and he had a lot of things to back it up, you know. So it's some stuff that I do listen to. I always keep an open mind because it's just fun to, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm a person that believe in a little bit of everything. Like I don't necessarily personally believe the Earth is flat. But I believe there's something to that. Okay. It might not be flat, but it might not be round. Right. You know, like I'm always open to new ideas and stuff, but <laughs> I hear a lot of crazy stuff. Oh yeah. My God. I hear a lot of crazy <laughs> Yeah, that's what I mean, because it opens your mind a lot. Cause you know, you're listening, you have your own idea, and then they're like, hmm. They One of the point. craziest things I've heard, and then I did my own research and it was slightly true, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, this is when one of my older brothers was staying with me. And he was a little low key reckless or whatever. And I would always be like, yo, like I'll always be like, at, at my college, we would get condoms 10 for a dollar. Okay. So I'll always just give everybody condoms because they are so cheap. He's Good like, man. Job. I was like, I'm, he's like, I'm not worried about that. I'm like, dude, what do you mean you're not worried about that? He was like, the only thing I'm worried about is AIDS and I can't get it. And I was like, wait. <laughs> wait <laughs> what? What are you talking about? He's like, no, I'm serious. Look it up. I'm a straight male. Straight men cannot catch HIV or AIDS. And I was like, what are you talking? Like, that's not true. And I'm arguing with him. He's like, look it up. And then I look it up. And like the results for straight men contracting HIV is so small. Like they don't even have a like a real percentage for it. The risk is lower. See, that's where my But it's I like way in. lower though. The risk is lower and it's high, higher for MSM. So men who have sex with men. D Look, I don't know anything. When he's telling this to me, I'm like, shut up. What are you talking about? I know. And then I started going it, online and I'm like, okay, so tell me about this. Well, I mean. Can you debunk this? Is, this? is it not true? I mean, but think about it. I mean, let's just get abstract. I mean, do women always have, do we, are we sure they always have sex with straight men? No, I'm okay. talking about for him. He said, <laughs> he said he's not worried. Right. But who he's with, we don't know about I'm just them. saying, okay. See, this is getting fun. <laughs> My brother who is a straight male okay has sex with a woman who may have hiv what's the likelihood of him catching oh it? yeah no it's high if of him catching it, it. Mm -hmm. okay yeah if she's positive so there is a likelihood mm -hmm. he can get it because he but, swore to me no 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 he's like man look at him it's hard I, I can't get it i was like no so okay enough of that talk I want to talk about your beautiful son and you guys have your own page or is it yeah, his yeah, page? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Well, whose it's, page is it? It's our page, you know, Aww. when he when he feels like taking pictures for it. And you guys like to eat. We love to eat. He loves sweets. Um, we just like doing stuff, you yeah. know, like I didn't have my father around. So I was just like, you know, what would I like to do if I was a kid? I'm like, you know, try new foods yes. and go funny places. And, you know, we're in L.A. So I grew up in Philly. It's different here. There's more opportunities to go to children friendly events so 
It's just dope, man. We're just having a good time. Have you guys been to Disneyland yet? Of course. He's been to Disneyland like I a haven't even times. been to Disneyland. It's expensive. No, that's probably why I haven't gone. Woo! As soon as you walk in, it's like $250. Oh, like, my God. Yo! <laughs> um, so are you a single dad? Oh, uh, what does that mean? So are you solely raising him on your own? Oh, no, no, no. I'm a co-parent. Nice. For sure. Proud that's co-parent. Good. It's good. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Me and his mom, we good friends. We talk all the time. You know, we out here in L.A., it's just us. We don't have any extended family out here. Yeah. And we got to make it work. So we got to have each other's back. It's dope. So Revolt, let's talk about that. When did you leave and, like, how's it been since Revolt? Yeah, Your Revolt, life? I got laid off from Revolt February 2018, a month before I was laid off um, iHeartRadio when I was working at Real 92.3. And I seen it coming. It was like, it wasn't a lot of uh, things going in production at the time, but... You know, Revolt's like family. I started yeah. when it when it launched. You know, they brought me out here if it wasn't from Revolt and mm. Diddy himself. You know, I wouldn't even be in L.A. So it was an amazing experience. But that stopped February 2018. So like, what's next for you? What's um? So hopefully I'll be in London, <gasps> DJing. Ah, that's where my fiance <laughs> is from. Hey, oh he's from London. Yeah. So what's that like? Accent and everything. What's that like? <laughs> it's fine. I go back and forth and we just do that whole... I dated someone from London uh -huh. and it, it was cool. It was good. Mm -hmm. Few little cultural differences. Um, She wasn't really a fan of the Caribbean culture. Yeah, she didn't understand. She was like, I don't... It's so sexual. But she was like... Mm. She was a very strict Muslim. Okay. So I can understand a little bit. So I was like, all right. Huh. The few people I dated that was outside of the States... It's been like a little culture shocky. Really? Yeah, it's been it's been a little rough. Yeah. You know, I, uh, one time I dated a girl from Germany. That was tough. They're very like to the point. Really? They didn't get any of the nuances of how I spoke, and they, I don't know. So anyway. So yeah, moving on. Hopefully, I'll be in London doing some DJ stuff. But I just dropped um, something I've been working on for the past few months now. Mm. It's my e-course teaching people how to host in the realms of podcasting, television, and radio. I've been doing this for about 11 years. Wow. It's actually all I've ever done. I got on the radio when I was in sophomore year in college and got a job. It wasn't an internship. Mm. And I've been doing radio ever since. Right now I have a national a radio show, 53 Markets with Hollywood Unlock and iHeart. And I just like, I'm ready to kind of give my perspective yes. of the game because I feel like there's no blueprint for what we do. You know, you kind of just start doing it and you kind of fall into opportunities and learn from your failures. But I feel like with my position and how I kind of rose through the industry i have some insight to give and i'm just ready to give that so it's a legendary do. media course it's going to be available probably in the next well by the time you see this it might be already available so just <laughs> check my instagram but i'm really excited about yeah. that it's like over six hours of content me telling my personal story me interviewing my peers me interviewing uh producers i've worked with emmy award winning producers and directors like wow. really getting insight from people that's working in this industry wow. and just to pass that knowledge forward yeah the fact that you're doing that you're educating people on yeah that, and you're gonna change some lives for sure and like you know it's some people like i feel like in this game mentorship is so important yeah even if you get it in spurts like if you meet somebody at an event networking and you have a quick conversation with them that could change your whole year mm -hmm. So I'm sitting down, you know, on my Skype and I'm doing phone calls and I'm just telling people like, just tell your story. Yeah. Cause I remember when I was coming up, I would go on MySpace and I would read the different bios and I would get inspiration from that. Yeah. So I know there was power in like everybody just tell your story. Cause That's we all story. got into this media game a different way. Like you're going in it through um, how you, you're working, being, you know, working in the hospital yes, or exactly. being a doctor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. But see how that brought you here. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like everybody has a different route. And I feel like we can learn from other people's journeys. Yes. And that takes some selflessness just to say, hey, I'm not going to be selfish and hide all my tips in. You're yeah. going to show the world. And it's just like when you really love what you do, you want to see other people do it. Uh -huh. Like that's really just what it is. That's amazing. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. It's the legendary media course. If you go on my Instagram at the real DJ damage, you will see everything you need for that. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming. Thank it's you. It's been real. Yeah. And we'll see you next time, hopefully. Peace. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you guys, that's been another amazing episode of The Dose. Thanks for tuning in with DJ Damage. I know you guys are subscribed. Make sure you're liking and you're commenting as well. And tell your friends about the show, okay? See you next time on The Dose.